morning everyone <clears throat> today our topic of discussion and during this lecture will be infections of the bone and joint um infection of the bone is called as osteomyelitis whereas uh, uh infection of the joint is called as septic arthritis uh, so, uh, just to give you an overview about this lecture, uh, we will talk more about osteomyelitis and very little about septic arthritis uh, because uh, uh, septic arthritis most of the time uh, surgical management is really needed. So, to start with, um, as you know, here it is written superative osteomyelitis because it's a surgery lecture but okay I will change it to osteomyelitis only uh, so uh, what is osteomyelitis osteomyelitis as you know itis is inflammation on osteo means bone so osteomyelitis is basically infection of the bone uh, and due to infection of course there will be inflammation so infection of the bone it is called as osteomyelitis and it frequently can represent a diagnostic challenge to the doctor uh, though it can be caused by a variety of organisms but uh, like it could be from gram positive gram negative microbacteria or fungi but uh, most of the time uh, the most common organisms I will t talk about that in a while okay to tell you the overview of this thing basically osteomyelitis is very common in children because uh, uh, like or you can say the children who are in still growing age uh, but now the incidence of that thing is decreasing whereas the incidence of this thing is increasing in uh, the elderly people um, especially those who are immunocompromised uh, nowadays so the incidence is increasing in those but before like uh, uh, of course like the incidence was too much in children uh, and not in adults so uh, the, the, the areas where it can occur in children and in adults is different for example, uh, in elderly people, it is uh, most commonly in vertebra, or you can say uh, they they suffer from vertebral osteomyelitis. Uh, whereas in children, uh, it occurs in long bone metaphysis, uh, so like tibia, uh, femur, okay, areas like this. So. Uh, and like I explained this thing many times like who are immunocompromised people of course like those who are using uh, immunosuppressive medications like corticosteroids or uh, azathioprine, cyclosporine, transplanted patients, the patients who are suffering from chronic diseases, the patients who are suffering from HIV infection or like uh, or cancers for example. So all these are called as immuno compromised people or like of course their immunity is not normal like other people uh, so okay so uh, as I told you in the start like it can occur uh, like uh, by a variety of organisms so most commonly uh, basically uh, it is caused by um, staphylococcus aureus right most commonly it is caused by staphylococcus aureus uh, especially in children uh, but uh, uh, when if we'll talk about the immunocompromised people of course it can it can be caused by any uh, organisms like gram positive gram negative or even like fungal infections they may have uh, like think about the patient who have aids or uh, hiv of course like you know they have, like aids uh, because their immunity is compromised so of course like they may have opportunistic infections so they the organism which cannot cause infection in normal people of course it can cause infection in those uh, so uh, now, uh, <clears throat> of course, like uh, as the name shows, osteomyelitis, which is inflammation of the bone, but of course, it is usually as a result of infection, uh, which involves 
both the local bone tissue and the surrounding marrow. Uh, so, uh, and uh, one thing, you know, when the infection is uh, in the subperiosteal space, we call it as periostitis. So, uh, <clears throat> so remember this thing, the Staphylococcus aureus is the most common organisms, otherwise beta Staphylococcus and other organisms can also cause. So, uh, basically Staphylococcal uh, organisms, you know, they have uh, uh, ability to infect the bone. Uh, so that's why, uh, you know, like they, they are the most common one. So, <clears throat> to talk about uh, what are the ways by which it can get infected, um, see, you can see over here, there could be hematogenous uh, root, exogenous infection, or uh, post-traumatic infection. Uh, of course, hematogenous, like through the blood, is the most common uh, way of getting infection, uh, and this is the one which is more common in children. Uh, because of their, they have their, their growing, their epiphyseal growth plate ha is highly vascular. Uh, uh, though it can occur in adults, but uh, like in children, this is the most common way. Uh, so, uh, sometime, you know, uh, for example, uh, it can like be as a result of septicemia for example when the infection is in the blood so of course it can reach uh, exogenous infection or post-traumatic infection of course like after trauma because it can lead to uh, directly uh, expose for example the bone to the uh, microbes so they can go and they can cause infection in the patient uh, so uh, here it is written acute hematogenous suppurative osteomyelitis so uh, of course, like now you understand what is acute hematogenous, like through the blood, superative, like which is which produces pus uh, or abscess formation, you can say like superative osteomyelitis. So the overall incidence is higher in developing countries, children 80%, male to female ratio 4, ratio 1. The most common site is the rapidly growing and highly vascular metaphysis of growing bones, proximal or distal part of tibia, uh, distal part of femur. Uh, so, uh, sorry, the spelling mistake. So, and uh, proximal part of humerus, right? So, right. So, uh, now this is quite understandable because all of these are long bones and they are growing in age. Like they are, they are in growing age. So, uh, these are the bones which can get infected uh, in the patients, right? So, uh, now uh, we will go further and discuss about. Uh, the pathophysiology you see, uh, if you can see over here, uh, this is the imaging of the bone. Of course, like this one is a drawing. You can see the abscess formation. You can see the holes in the cortex. You can see the periosteum. This is the epiphyseal plate. These are the inflammatory cells, uh, which are, and of course, like when we will take the, uh, what you can say, imaging, so it appears like this. So at the early stage, there will be abscess and like this one, there will be abscess formation in the later stage. Uh, sorry, again, there is a spelling mistake. So, in a later stage, uh, there will be new bone formation. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, now, um, basically, this one is called as uh, um, acute hematogenous separative osteomyelitis. Why? Because, you know, when we classify, there are other type of osteomyelitis acts as well. For example, something called as granulomatous osteomyelitis. Uh, so, of course, like, you know, what is granuloma? A uh, granuloma is a chronic inflammatory process in which there is central giant cells and macrophages are there uh, and also uh, lymphocytes and plasma cells are there, right? So, of course, when the inflammation is lasting for so long, it can lead to granulomatous osteomyelitis, okay? Like, uh, uh, the inflammatory cells like macrophages and all these ones, they, they collect over that area. Uh, so, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, but like the, our discussion is like basically this one, uh, though that, that's also the type. type. Okay. So, uh, again, like this one is the pathophysiology still. Uh, we are uh, talking about, uh, see, 
uh, you can see over here uh, large sequestrum can can't be absorbed it's the reason of course chronic osteomyelitis if we will not treat that so it will it will change and small sequestrum may be absorbed or eliminated by the um, phagocytes uh, again uh, influence to adjacent joint in children younger than two years of age some vessels cross the physis you can see like this one and may allow the spread of the infection into the epiphysis. Uh, in adults, the physis have closed, the infection can spread to the uh, cannot spread to the end of the bone. In children older than two years of age, the physis prevents the infection, the spread of the metaphysal abscess into the epiphysis, right? So uh, again, like th these are the I think like you have covered these things in, in physiology in pathology. Okay, so again, like this is the same thing that is uh, showing the changes in the adults and in the children right and uh, see in the children younger than two years of age the firm vessels uh, cross the physis and this one of course like the vessels are not crossing the physis so uh, that's why you know there is like the disinfection cannot cannot go here okay so uh, basically what happens in osteomyelitis is that you know uh, similar to like when there is infection to other organs, uh, what you can say, of course, you know, we know what the bone is a hard structure. And uh, the good thing about this thing, uh, uh, like uh, when the infection is in the bone uh, and around the bones, there is a lot of soft tissue. So the pressure which is building inside the bone can go even into the surrounding tissue. Okay. Uh, can also go into the intramedullary canal and uh, what happens is uh, uh, like due to this you know sometimes it's very hard to identify in the start okay uh, so now uh, due to this pressure of like infection or inflammation there is an increased osteoclastic response uh, and uh, you know like what is what is osteoclast and what is osteoblast like osteoclast are the bone cutting cells and uh, osteoblast are the bone building cells so you it can be easily remembered by osteoblast b for blast and b for building and osteoclast so c for class and c for cutting so what happens like there is an increased osteoclastic response uh, which uh, basically there is resorption uh, of the of the bone you can say okay uh, so if like we don't treat the infection if it is leaf if, we, if it, we will leave it untreated or for example if it goes undiagnosed so what happens like uh, uh, this like chronically uh, the osteoclast they, they lose their uh, ability uh, to remodel the bone okay so what happens like due to this, uh, uh, what happens is like the inflammation can reach up to the periosteum, like from the intramedullary canal, it can reach to the periosteum. Uh, so, and when it reaches to the periosteum, like here is a point, there is a periosteal reaction and we can see it radiographically. Uh, so of course, like radiographically, when there are changes in the bone, so of course we must differentiate it from the malignancies. So, uh, what are the clinical manifestations? So, again, the same point occur predominantly in children. The common locations, as I told you, may have an injury history, like trauma history, and natural courses. Uh, natural course is around um, three to four weeks. Transform into chronic osteomyelitis after penetration of the abscess through the skin, right? So, the same point I was telling you before. Uh, so, uh, basically we can say like acute osteomyelitis is uh, uh, the stage when there is no bone death okay but when there is uh, bone is like not viable or you can say necrosed or there is necrosed bone so of course like we call it as chronic osteomyelitis so uh, now uh, if we will talk about the natural history of the of the of this condition uh, what happens is uh, the history is quite short uh, like within two days after infection 
the patient can present with bone pain uh, and uh, on examination what you will feel is tenderness over that area so you can see over here there is systemic signs and local signs so first of all i'm talking about the local signs so of course like the patient present okay now one thing is un understood whenever there is any infection uh, it will lead to systemic features like fever fatigue irritability malaise right things like this uh, these are the constitutional symptoms of any infection anywhere in the body but uh, if you will talk about the local signs of course like the patient will present with fever but basically with bone pain okay of course whenever someone presents with fever so we search for the focus and in search of the focus uh, the patient may present with bone pain so uh, now uh, when there is bone pain and you will examine that area maybe there will be tenderness but without any signs of inflammation here it is written edema redness but it's not always present and that's why uh, it's a diagnostic challenge to the doctors who diagnose it uh, this condition and of course like uh, there will be restriction of movement there could be tenderness to palpation there could be fluctuations but once the infection like what i was telling you that you know uh, due to that pressure the infection can spread to the periosteum so uh, once the infection um, reaches the periosteum uh, you can say uh, the local signs will be more obvious for for like for example you can see the redness at that stage okay and of course uh, as we are discussing superative type of osteomyelitis so um, simply when there is separation so of course there will be pus formation and when there is pus formation uh, of course like uh, Pus can, pus can collect inside, pus can go in the adjacent tissues and sometimes it can even come to the skin, okay. So, but not always, but of course we have to discuss like each and every type of thing which can occur. So, pus can form in the bone, pus can form in the soft tissues. So, the appearance of the bone basically doesn't change at the start of the infection you can say uh, anyone who have this sign and symptoms it doesn't means like you will do a radiographic studies and you can found the changes right away so the radiological features uh, you can say does not appear in acute osteomyelitis until 1 to 14 days after the onset of symptom this is very 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 important thing to understand so uh, basically the in initial x-ray appearance is very much vague. Uh, so of course like cannot be appreciated, appreciated uh, by the radiologist on the x-rays. Okay. So you can say like uh, when there is change in the bone like usually at 10 to 14 days. Uh, of course like... Uh, we can see the changes on the x-rays and once we can see the changes on x-ray of course uh, you have to differentiate because there are many many conditions which can cause radiographic changes on x-ray for example it could be sarcoma uh, it could be osteomyelitis it could be leukemias anything like this so uh, this is the presentation okay and what is restriction of movement of course like whenever there is pain uh, in the bone of course you cannot move it properly not like normal so that's why you know there is like limitation of uh, uh, bone movement okay uh, like understandable okay so what are the investigations of course like anyone who is presenting with these features of course we go for the lab examination uh, now if we will talk about the lab examination uh, or lab investigations by the way so I would rather change it to investigations okay so of course like we we have to do the baselines uh, you can do a CBC uh, complete blood count in which you can found high WBCs like neutrophils are increased which which point towards uh, infection you can found increased CRP 
which is C-reactive protein. Uh, you can go, you, of course, ESR will be raised as well. Okay, so of course, like uh, we can do these investigations. We can take culture or aspiration. Of course, you have to take uh, the sample from that part of the bone. If uh, uh, you can send it to the lab and they can do culture on that. Okay, so we can we can run these investigations as well. Uh, but of course, like the all none of these are diagnostic. Of course, like this one will be diagnostic, right? But uh, these one, what, what, I, what are the general investigations which will tell you that of course there is some sort of infection is going on. And but to talk about like uh, like the specific investigations which you must do in order to like reach the diagnosis. Of course, you can go for an X-ray. You can go for an MRI, you can go for a CT scan, uh, you can go for an ultrasound. Uh, ultrasound is very good, by the way, because it can give, like you can say, a quick diagnosis. Uh, for example, if they can see a fluid or edema. And of course, like if you are doing aspiration as well, uh, you have to do it under, under ultrasound guidance, of course. So, uh, well, rest, you know, MRI is very useful for visualizing bone and CT scan. So you can see like CT scans of the bone, okay, uh, which can show you like what kind of abnormalities there. Or for example, uh, this one. Uh, of course, like this is the CT scan of the vertebra. Uh, and you can see like if there is, you can see the bone uh, density, bone, bone, bone is destroyed over here. Okay, uh, like this. So these are all the investigations you can do. Uh, ultrasonography look and you can see uh, of course it's a simple and it's a very handy investigation uh, can be done very quickly and there is no uh, exposure to the rays even so you can see uh, ultrasonography may demonstrate changes as early as one to two days uh, after the onset of symptoms and the normalities include the soft tissue abscess and periosteal abscess so and the point I was making, like ultrasonography allows for ultrasounded guidance, aspiration. So you can see like they are showing uh, like the ultrasound photograph and see the changes which can be seen on, X, on, on an ultrasound. And of course, like if there is need of any aspiration, so you can do it under the ultrasound guidance as well. Okay, nuclear studies or radionucleotide bone scanning. See, it's a three-phase bone scan with technetium-99. And uh, uh, what you can say, it can provide us some additional information. Okay. So, especially when we scan it with mucoside label with gallium-67 or indium-111. So, this thing can be done as well. MRI, of course, it's a very effective way to see if, especially the deep bones. Okay. Uh, and you can see over here it shows superiority compared with plain radiography CT and radiographic scanning in selected anatomic locations okay so how we treat uh, you can see like the diagnosis early diagnosis like anyone who presenting with fever severe pain in metaphysis of long bones and restriction of movement uh, you found a tenderness at the side uh, you found like the white blood cells and neutro neutro neutrophils or neutrocytes are elevated and MRI is very useful for early diagnosis. Uh, like remember like it's written over here early diagnosis. So, of course like MRI can show the changes very quickly. Okay like the other investigations may, 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 may not show you that much quickly. Uh, then comes the differential diagnosis you can see over here. Of course, like anyone who will present with redness, tenderness over any region, you can see over here or here. So, of course, like what are the other conditions you can think of? Cellulitis or deep abscess, rheumatoid arthritis, osteosarcoma and even sarcoma like the bone tumors. All these things can be. The differential diagnosis okay what is the treatment for osteomyelitis what is the purpose we have to control the inflammation as soon as possible 
and uh, we have to treat it so that it should not change into the chronic osteomyelitis. So now, what are the treatment options, antibiotics, surgery, general support and local, uh, what you can say, uh, assist or locally like what we can do. So first of all antibiotics, so see, uh, what is the most common organism in children especially, Staphylococcus aureus, right? So of course like uh, once the diagnosis is made, we have to start the antibiotic as soon as possible. So uh, you can say uh, we must choose the antibiotic and one of the thing is that you know we have to give the antibiotic for a long duration of period. Right. So uh, sometimes like you can say the antibiotics are given for even six weeks. Okay. Uh, because we have to treat the patients. Uh, what you can say. Uh, of course, like uh, we have to eradicate the infection. So sometimes you can say the antibiotics are given for even like uh, longer period of time. You can see like we can use a combination medication. Early intervention, early, early intervention is uh, the key. Effective antibiotics should be given, enough dose should be there, and whole duration, I told you, like up to six weeks should be given. So, uh, now, uh, antibiotics should be given within the five days of onset, like basically as soon as the diagnosis is made. And uh, what is the, the route? Like, first of all, uh, of course, like at least two types of antibiotics, for example, one for Staphylococcus aureus, another is broad spectrum antibiotic. And you can see over here. Uh, so, of course, like, uh, first of all, you will start giving empirical therapy, but once you have got the results from the labs showing the exact nature of the bacteria, uh, of course, you can uh, tune it up according to that, like, maybe, like, if, if of course, like, uh, the antibiotic you are giving, it's already effective, you can continue that, or otherwise, you can, you can use a more specific type of antibiotic for the type of bacteria which comes in the results. Uh, you can see over here in osteomyelitis the dose of antibiotics is much greater than in soft tissue infection and uh, the antibiotics must not withdraw until three to six weeks. That's why I told you like up to six weeks should be given, right? Uh, so that's the most important thing, right, to do in these patients. Okay, and... <clears throat> um, if after giving antibiotics, uh, if you see like the extra changes are disappeared, which means like the inflammation is gone and there is no abscess formation, of course, like we don't need any surgery. So of course, like we are studying surgery and we must talk about like the surgical choices. So uh, of course, like we have to discuss that. So if we found that even after antibiotics, what happens like... Uh, uh, the situation is not like the condition is not getting better or there is abscess formation of course we will go for a surgery and uh, of course like uh, what kind of surgery is done okay so uh, the first surgery is of course to drain the pus okay so that you know the acute osteomyelitis should not change into the chronic osteomyelitis uh, you can see uh, what you can say um, in that one, of course, what they do is like uh, they just, well, of course, like it depends on what area there is infection. So according to that, like what is the best choice or the best approach they use and uh, they basically drain the pus. Okay. So uh, once, you know, they have done, so of course, like uh, then, of course, it is followed by antibiotics and follow up is needed for these patients. So what are the methods? Yeah, like, like drainage can be done by drilling and drainage can, can be done by fenestration. Okay, I will show you what it means. Uh, you can see uh, this one is like they have incised the periosteum and then they make small, small holes, right? So what they are doing, like they are uh, basically draining up the pus from these areas, okay? Uh, or you can see over here, like... Uh, they are irrigating and see this one is the collector and this one is the fluid they are giving so that this area should be washed okay so this is one of the thing 
but bone drilling is not always required like uh, because nowadays you know we have a very sophisticated antibiotics or very uh, new type of antibiotics are available uh, so that's the reason you know nowadays osteomyelitis doesn't need surgeries rather antibiotics do work very good but just few of the patients especially the patients who have chronic osteomyelitis and elderly patients you know uh, sometimes they need some surgery right so or someone who have for example necrotic bone okay so of course like the antibiotics then don't cannot fix the necrotic bone so uh, in that case of course like uh, uh, we we have to perform the surgery nowadays but uh, the 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 thing what you can say is really needed nowadays just because of uh, good options of antibiotics which are needed so this one is a closed drainage you can say a single drainage tube with negative pressure bottle are used when the person not massive so that so that unit will connect this one is of course with drainage okay they are giving the fluid and they are collecting it okay what is the general support uh, of course, general support means like, you know, you will give antipyretic drugs, you will give like the fluids, uh, what they are needed, you will take care of their nutrition, you will take care of their pain, okay? And uh, like the local support which we have to give is immobilize the joint in plaster cast, okay? Of course, like uh, it can prevent, it can give rest to that area it can uh, of course when there is infection at some point of the bone of course it is uh, weak over that and it can get fractured easily so that's one of the reason that you know uh, by doing this thing you can you can prevent any fracture okay in that area so that's a very important thing uh, you can do uh, in these patients and uh, that's how this one is treated uh, <clears throat> okay, one of the thing is also like, you know, uh, uh, sometimes, you know, uh, what happens is like, uh, not nowadays, like before the antibiotics, you know, uh, if there is any dead tissue or the necrotic bone is there, so like they have to remove that. And sometimes, of course, when they remove that, so there is a defect over there, so then they, uh, what you can say, they nowadays, of course, like they fix that gap with some material of course to provide the same uh, what you can say uh, same strength to the bone so of course like anyone who is not treated in time it can change into chronic osteomyelitis as I told you and uh, chronic osteomyelitis may lead to fistula formation may have a draining sinus um, this one is more commonly seen in diabetic patients or the patients who have incompletely treated osteomyelitis uh, so of course like this one need more care uh, you can say more uh, uh, what you can say meticulous care is needed in these patients uh, so now uh, you can see over here uh, sequest strip okay um, okay what is C Sequestrum. Sequestrum is basically the dead bone or the necrotic bone. So uh, anyone who have acute osteomyelitis and if they have any dead bone over that area, of course that cannot be absorbed. Okay. Uh, so of course like uh, this dead bone uh, should be removed. Okay. So that is one of the point to do. So see anyone with chronic osteomyelitis the limbs can become thickened and deformed and see there are multiple sinuses like from where the pus is coming out okay and then of course we we can do a x-ray we can do a ct scan uh, so this things can be done and of course that you know then that we, uh, of course after that we have to do treatment and uh, surgery is of course required because we have to remove that sequestrum okay which is uh, which is there and we have to fix that dead cavity okay so that thing is important 
so uh, see eliminate the dead cavity and saucerization I can I can see like if there is any saucerization is there uh, you can see over here bone destruction is there in this one and uh, uh, fenestration you can see over here see the bone destruction in this case okay and uh, again you can see the bone defect you can see the sequestrum we have to you can see over here the bone defect okay okay what is saucerization saucerization like saucer is uh, this word is taken from from the same saucer saucer is like the plate in which we eat right uh, so what is saucerization is basically uh, sometimes to treat the chronic uh, uh, osteomyelitis what they do like they perform a surgery and they remove the skin and everything from here and they leave the bone open so it, it like basically it appears like a saucer okay so they just expose it to the outside so that you know all the infection should be cleared and then later on they close it so that is called as saucerization so uh, this is like all about what you can say uh, osteomyelitis uh, okay chronic one as well as the acute one um, so uh, after that I told you like I will talk a very little about uh, septic arthritis okay uh, so uh, septic arthritis by the way uh, as I told you like uh, it is not so important why because uh, uh, like very few times you know the surgery is needed but uh, as the name shows septic arthritis it means like there is infection in the joint okay and this is the condition where usually the bacteria as they start multiplying in the joint cavity uh, and of course like whenever there is any inflammation at the joint uh, for sure like of course like uh, it's sure that you know it is going to limit the joint motion and there will be severe pain when someone try to move that joint and uh, uh, rest are all the same features which, the, which they will present with they will present with the pain uh, they will present with uh, what you can say the fever they will present with uh, uh, malaise and all the constitutional symptoms right so uh, let me show you septic arthritis uh, images okay uh, so you can see over here in images of septic arthritis for example um, this one uh, Don't know how to make it drag it on this side okay anyhow um, you can see over here this is a patient with septic arthritis right so uh, of course like uh, this is the local thing what you are seeing the redness the inflammation the swelling and all the stuff right uh, the edema or when you will touch it it will be tender but of course like generally this patient will present with fever with uh, malaise with limitation of movement of course they are they don't want to move that thing and when you are going to examine the joint you will found that the joint is swollen it's warm it's tender all the things will be there right so uh, basically septic arthritis can occur in all age groups okay but again it is more common in children and again the same organisms are involved uh, in for example if, if it's a sexually active adult uh, so think about gonococcal arthritis okay okay uh, okay in children one of the thing which can occur by the way is basically when children have osteomyelitis so sometimes you know it can spread into the joint space as well okay or you can say uh, the osteomyelitis break through the metaphysis into the joint uh, so what happens like again uh, uh, the the most important thing which I want to mention about this thing is like why it's important to treat 
because if we don't treat this one the joint space can be damaged and when the joint space is damaged or the cartilage is damaged of course like it's an irreversible type of damage and um, it can lead to chronic deformity or the chronic loss of motion okay or the motion cannot be that much smooth okay so that's why it's very important to treat this because you know once the cartilage is damaged uh, it's an irreversible type of damage okay so that's why the treatment is very 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 important it's very important to uh, do the same investigation cbc esr crp and in this one you can take the uh, sample from by aspiration through the joint space uh, send it to the lab do the culture and sensitivity and of course uh, give the antibiotics with antipyretics and antialgesics and all those drugs right so uh, of course like uh, uh, if we need to do a surgery or we need to irrigate or we need to debride this area so of course nowadays arthroscopes are available for this thing so antibiotics should be given uh, according to like empirically or according to what the results you get and later on like you can uh, you can what you can say treat it okay uh, by this thing you can see like uh, here septic arthritis in there uh, okay so you can see over here again uh, septic arthritis okay uh, so uh, this is about septic arthritis uh, rest of course like everything is same uh, but in this one of course like the patient they, they don't want to move their joint because now the infection is in the joint space okay and that's the reason that uh, oh, the most important thing is the cartilage damage which is an irreversible type of damage once it is done of course uh, that's a that will cause a permanent uh, deformity for example right uh, so you can see the difference between the, this joint and this joint this one is normal and this one I have septic arthritis okay so of course we'll you will take the history you will do the examination you will do the investigations and once the investigation is done then you will go for the treatment okay so that's all about the bone uh, what you can say the bone infection in the next lecture we'll talk about the bone tumors okay thank you so much for listening guys